Chapter 1. Lawyers and the Daycare Incident. But yeah, I was so distraught. I was so distraught not to be able to see my kids for 90 days, you know, and I found out that George McGlaris' father was an attorney out here, had shot himself in the past too, and, and had also committed suicide. And, and he was such a good lawyer, you know, rest his soul. You know, he, he was a good attorney. He helped me get every weekend with my kids. So your third lawyer was good? No, my second lawyer, the one that, that shot himself, was a really good lawyer. He got me every weekend. He was, we were about to get joint custody. Everything was... But once that happened, everything went downhill from there, you know? So the second your lawyer committed suicide before your court case, everything started going downhill. Yeah, I, did, I just paid him $5,000 to, to finish trial. And then, yeah, it, it was so crazy. I had to go try to get another attorney, and my ex had cleaned me out. So I had to go go try to get a payment program and get some other attorney. I called maybe 50 different... Um, and and I, it's like, hey, I have a you know, pregnant female judge, and she's really been really biased. And let me see my kids. And uh, it's, it's like, is it Department B? Yeah, that's my wife. I was like, oh, okay, I can't, I can't represent you. I was like, do you, do you have any referrals or anybody else I could go to? Says no. And I guess I, this guy's name is Harry Marquis, and and I guess he's a uh, her husband, which is like 20, 30 years older than him. And, and anyway, yeah. So I, I ended up going and retaining a guy named Kurt Smith, and he said, oh, I'm really good in front of Marquis. I'll get you your you know joint custody. And, is that your third lawyer? Yeah, that's my third lawyer. So he said he was friends with the judge and he'd get you custody. Yeah, he'd give me... So I gave and what him, was his name? Uh, Kurt uh, Kurt Smith. Kurt Smith in yeah. Nevada, in yeah. Las Vegas, Nevada. Kurt Smith, yeah. So he said he'll show up. And then uh, during that time, I'm really distraught. You know, the, the, the hearing is like months uh, uh, away, and I ended up going to the, to the church. I go to... You know, I don't know if I was restricted from going to the church or no. I just had a restraining order that said I couldn't go near go near her. So I saw the vehicle there and I'm like, oh crap, okay, I'm gonna make sure I don't run into her. But I knew my kids were over there at daycare, so I went. I was like, man, I really miss my kids. It's been over you know 60 days. So I went over there to daycare and said, hey, can I see my son and my daughter? And like, yeah, go ahead. And I go say, hey, Mason, Daddy didn't abandon you. I love you. And I'm hugging him. And then the 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 campus security comes over there at Canyon Ridge and they're like. Oh, you need to leave. I was like, well, can I see my daughter? I just, I haven't seen him for almost two months. Like I really miss him. And then I end up, uh, I end up going, going down to, uh, I end up just leaving it without incident. And I guess she filed a police report off of that. And I get a card in the mail that says you have a, a bench warrant for your arrest. And I'm like, oh my gosh, what the hell? Like I didn't break the TPO. Michael broke the restraining order by attending the church Candace was at. You know, I just went to the church but maybe because she was there. So I, I I was supposed to go out of the country for this training for Geotab. And What's Geotab? Geotab's the third largest tracking device company that I work so this for. Is, yeah, this is your company. This is where Michael got the GPS trackers to put on Candace's vehicle in order to track her and the kids. And, and this is the first restraining order that your wife got? Um, yeah, I think it was the first or second, yeah. So, okay. So, so I go into... So I, I'm supposed to leave the country, go to, go to Canada, and I have this bench warrant, so I'm not sure if I'm going to be arrested if I leave the country. Bench warrant. Noun. A warrant issued by a presiding judge or by a court against a person guilty of contempt or indicted for a crime. And I end up going and uh, filing a motion to dismiss this, this uh, bench warrant so I can get it off my record. I asked an attorney if, I could do, if they could do it. They said, oh, we're going to charge you a thousand, you do it yourself. So I go up to the court to file it. And they say, oh, you, here, they took my license and said, you got to go see the judge. I go upstairs to see the judge, and they arrest me in court. Hold on. you got to go back. This is crazy. So you were on your third lawyer? Yeah, I was on my third lawyer. You are on your third lawyer, and your third lawyer didn't file the paperwork. You did? Yeah, I filed because it was a criminal matter. It was a, it, So he only did family court or whatever. So they were trying to charge me with, with a criminal uh, bench warrant. So he didn't handle the, the criminal side. He only did family But law. what would the criminal bench warrant be for? For the TPO violation. Which is well, TPO is a restraining temporary order. Temporary restraining order. Temporary yeah. restraining order. And what did she say you do to violate the restraining order? Well, she said order? that I went to the church to try to abduct the children at church. I never tried to. I just wanted to see my kids and say hi to them, you know? We all know what happened at the daycare when Michael picked up the wrong child. He had a restraining order to stay away from the kids and Candace. And that's all I did. And I just I got to hug my son and say I love him and I didn't abandon him and, and I'll see him soon and... They wouldn't let me see my daughter, so I ended up just leaving. They told, asked me to leave. I left, but I still got a bench warrant in the mail, and then I tried to get this bench warrant quashed before I go to go to Canada, and I get thrown in jail, and they throw me in jail. They denied my, they denied me bail. Chapter two, jail and hearings. 
they, they put me in this freaking, it, it took forever to do intake. They put me in a, a, a concrete room with 30, 40 other people. You have to sleep on the ground. And it's, it's just terrible. The most horrid food you can imagine. And, and you're just stuck like sardines. You have to sleep on the floor for almost three days. No bed. You have to sleep on the concrete floor in the cold. Uh, in the, they have in Las benches. Vegas. Yeah, and that's, the, that's the drunk tank or, or intake. And they, they purposely keep you there for three days to see if you'll bail out. Michael was not bailing out of anything. He was staying in jail. And deservedly so. And it's just torturous. I mean, you can't get sleep. You're, you're so dry. And then I had to go to court when I'm super, you know, sleep deprived. And I'm, I'm on the video camera asking the judge, please let me go. I got a training denied. Denied bail, denied an OR, you know, it's an own recognizance, recognizance uh, re release. And then I ended up getting out. And um, yeah, I, I, I signed that stupid plea deal. Michael would have signed the plea deal because going to trial would have been much worse. So, and, and then I finally get a second evidentiary hearing, right? And I end up having, uh, Kurt Smith didn't show up either. My uh, the attorney said that he's really good. He sent some guy named Mark Anderson. That's this huge dude. His bar number is 666. And he freaking comes in there and, and says, uh, uh, oh, I said, where's Kurt Smith at? Oh, I'm representing you. I was like, I've never even talked to you about my case. Oh, I've studied your case files. I, well, the day I show up with, with Mark Anderson, I go in there and... And I told him this, I, I called a bunch of attorneys before you guys, and I tried to contact, you know, I, I actually contacted the judge. The, and the, the judge brings us up in open court, says, says, oh, he tried to contact my husband, and, and the, the, my mom is outside of the court calling me, saying, your, your judge uncle, uh, Judge Bonaventure, he's a, he did the Binion's trial. He called my mom and said, what, what's up with Michael? They just called me or something, Metro or something, the Department of Homeland Security. Like, they think I'm you know, trying to hurt the judge or something. I don't, I don't know. But anyway, I'm like, I didn't do anything. Just... Michael is skipping a lot of facts, skipping a lot of facts while sounding like a guilty person. So I go to court and the judge brings this up in open court, says that he tried to call my husband. And, and then, and then I had a guy from the department of Homeland Security come up to me in court with his badge and flash. Do you want to harm the judge? I was like, what? I've never made any threat or anything. You know, no. Chapter three, domestic violence. And Judge Linda Markey. Oh yeah, he pushed her one time, or he he put her in handcuffs, and, and there was one time where where she was punching me, and I said, "He punched me again. I'm gonna put you in these toy handcuffs," and I did. And we used to, you know, imagine just for a second, imagine six foot four, two hundred and fifty pound Michael McDonald putting Candace in a pair of toy handcuffs against her will. Uh, you know, why you, would we she punch sexual you? things or whatever. You know, it was just it was crazy. Why would she punch you? <laughs> Don't bother asking, why did you put her in handcuffs? Or, how long was she in handcuffs? <laughs> why was oh, she, she was, she had, like I said, she would get very, like the flight, or, flight, or flight response was really big. I would try to go and hug her and calm her down, and she'd be wailing on me, you know what I mean? And Yeah, I've never called the cops on her or anything like that, you know what I mean? But Well, why didn't you have a mental evaluation on her to prove she's I, insane? We asked her for one, and the judge didn't say no. And then what is her name? They, they made, who, my ex? Or yes. The judge? Candace. Candace, and, okay. My, but they ended up, uh, her attorney said, oh, we want him to have a mental eval. I'm like, what? So I ended up getting a mental eval. I was in, You uh, got the mental evaluation and she didn't get the mental yeah, evaluation? Yeah, they, they, didn't, they didn't require her to get one. So I had to go find a, 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 a psych when I have adjustment to order. I, I can't, I'm going from being a father and a husband to, to just being a single bachelor again, you know? Like, to being attacked by family law court completely in Las advised. Vegas, Nevada. Yeah. The interviewer has done zero research and giggles about things like domestic violence, gun violence, and domestic abuse. So, so anyway, the, the judge ordered that I, I, I refinance the house or sell it. Uh, we had over 140 in equity and I had a refi approved. I ended up going back to court again. After the trial, I go back to court again. Um, let's see what happened there. Well, the chat wants to know about why the judge would think that you were threatening the judge. Michael was trying to create a conflict of interest any way he could. Judge Marquis has a husband that is also a lawyer, and Michael tried to retain his counsel so Judge Marquis would have to recuse herself. Uh -oh, Let's talk about that because, story. Because I, I called her husband. So they, okay, they so you that. called the judge's husband? I didn't make any threat, threats to her husband. I was an Did you know it was the judge's husband? At the husband? time, I did not know it was her husband, no. So when you called the judge's husband, you didn't know it was her husband, and he's a family law lawyer. Yeah. 
and you were interviewing him to maybe take your case and you didn't know that his wife was the judge yeah, in your know. case. Didn't know. I had I called about 50 different lawyers. So. And then she, the judge started feeling like you were intimidating her? Something like that, yeah. And, and that's ridiculous. And, and I made a, I think I made a statement too saying saying that, oh, I hope your pregnancy goes well or something. My, my uncle had disclosed some information which he probably shouldn't have that she was having a difficult pregnancy that he would have to fill in for her or something. But he couldn't do it because we're family, you know what I mean? So... He had to, to recuse himself from, from that position. So so I made that off comment I shouldn't have. And anyway, yeah, I blew up from there. So ever since then, the judge would file all these things and, and allegations and, you know. So you, so somehow the judge got pissed off. Yeah. The yeah. judge got pissed off. And, and she also knew me from my being a, a witness in my parents' case, too, which had been, been a conflict and been recused as well, you know. And the judge was the same judge that got your mother and stepfather divorced. Yes, correct. Okay. Yep. So then they required you to get a mental evaluation, but right, not yep. the wife to get a mental evaluation. Yep. Chapter four, rectal prolapse and the fight at the in-laws house. I see your car there and I, I see the, the ex, the, the freaking new boyfriend uh, over there standing on the corner. That would have been big daddy Joe. And he sees me and, I'm, I, and during this time, there was some allegations of some stuff like, like, my ex had texted me during the time when I had to see my daughter for the many days that my daughter's having rectal prolapses where she would have to she might have to have surgery. I'm like, what the hell's happening? What is that? Rectal prolapse occurs when the lining of a child's rectum protrudes through the anus and outside the body. This can occur because the ligaments and muscles become weakened from problems including chronic constipation, chronic diarrhea, or straining while going to the bathroom. I was very concerned about that. And she said, uh, uh, she texts me and says, oh, she's having rectal prolapses and she might, she might have to have surgery. I'm like, who the, why is she having that? Oh, she's straining. It's, it's a food allergy probably. And I'm like, okay, who's watching our daughter? That's the first thing I think of. And, and then I, I ended up going and, and saying, saying like, like. Michael was saying that someone was raping his infant daughter. He had only one target and only one motive. What's, you know, who's, who's watching her? And then she tells me that she's got a new boyfriend and he's been watching the kids alone. And I looked this guy felonies for sexual assault and lewdness of a minor. What are you talking about? Yeah. So your wife starts dating a man who has so, criminal charges so of sexual guy, assault this guy of was, minors? This guy was like a couple years older than her, like five years old. I guess he used to go to a college group and try to pick up younger chicks. And he, a lot of girls were like, we knew about this guy before. Her friend had just divorced him, like one of her best friends divorced him, that she said he had raped her in the past or something too. So he's known to rape somebody. He used to be, you know, comic book store guy. A lot of girls were telling me that he was, he, they were, he, they made him feel really awkward. So I'm like, oh great, my daughter's being watched alone. And I have talking parents messages saying that, that he's watching her alone and that. This is all nonsense. It's all to assassinate someone's character. Michael can't handle that Joe is better. It eats at him. Like, let me let me have the first the right of first refusal. If, if refusal which, okay, what's the right of first refusal? That's where if if you have something going on, you have to get a babysitter. That you have the the other the their the parent the other parent give them the option to to watch it before. They... So right of divorce yeah. decree. So that 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 way you know in case instead of buying a getting a babysitter, you give the other party an option to see the children or watch the children before you go let some stranger watch them. So I asked for that, and my attorney, you know, like I said, I my attorney ended up dropping from the case, so I had to file a lot of stuff afterwards. But anyway, so during this time, I, I I'm really concerned about my daughter, and I'm, I'm I found out this you know this nine felonies for lewdness of minor sexual assault. I sent this to her through talking parents. What the hell, kid? Is you're letting this guy watch our kids? He's got oh, that's not him. He doesn't have a middle name. I'm like, what are you talking about? He's about the same age. He's got, you know, I'm I'm stressing out. You know what I mean? Like like. So I, I didn't see my kids, so it was 90 days, and then she starts having rectal prolapses. And so anyway, I finally get my kids after that order, the divorce decree put, gets put in, I see them every other weekend. And my, my son and daughter, they tell me, like, I was like, how's everything going? And it's like, oh, mommy has a new boyfriend, and he's been watching us or something. And I'm like, okay, you guys doing okay? And then, I, and, and then my daughter... Um, Michael talks to children like they are adults. He burdens them with adult problems. My brother, my son tells me, oh, he, he took Malia in the room and locked me out. I'm like, what? Who's Malia? My daughter. This is criminal. 
to your own daughter. Who is the babysitting yeah. your children without your permission or consent. And, and I'm very concerned. And, and then my, my son goes and tells me that. And then my daughter, uh, my sister, I bring my brother's house. And my sister-in-law asks Malia, hey, is, is, is Joe touching you? She's like, yeah, where? And she points at her vagina. And I'm like, oh, man, I, I'm livid. You know what I mean? And so now your wife has a boyfriend who has a sexual assault history with children. And he's babysitting your children without your permission and consent. That's what I have to do a welfare check record. So they go over there and they, they I guess they, they um, um, I, I filed the motion. Could I told them, okay, and, which I'm just like livid. And then I ended up um, getting my, my daughter. I try to tell my ex, hey, I'm going to bring her to the doctor, get her looked at. Michael loved taking his kids to the doctor. It was his way of going around the rules that the court had set. And, and then when I do that, I go to pick him up at daycare. She shows up at the daycare and says, you're not taking her. I, I go and grab her. And, and Wait, who shows up the daycare of the wife? My, my ex-wife shows up when we have a TPO in place. A it's supposed to be my weekend with the kids. And she, she goes and starts shoving me with my daughter in my arms, starts pushing me in the hallway, which is assault, I guess. But um, the, the daycare calls the cops. And I end up, uh, they end up taking the, the, my daughter, the daycare workers, while she's over there shoving me against the wall. So your wife starts shoving you in public. The daycare, the daycare calls the police. And with witnesses there, yeah. And I was supposed to have them every other weekend. So I ended up not getting it. And I, I, I couldn't bring them. Um, she, she got rid of my appointment that I had, like the doctor's appointment with my daughter, wouldn't let me take her. And, and the judge, Judge Harkas says, oh, you're telling your daughter that we're going to, and, and this is, it was unsubstantiated and uh, this, this doesn't look like it's the same guy. So we're, we're, we're denying you your, your visitation anymore and we're going to give you supervised visits. At this point, Michael was not mentally capable of unsupervised visits or having the kids on his own at any time. I'm like, are you freaking kidding me? So I'm over there trying to, 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 to you know, be a dad and, and be concerned about my daughter. And I ended up going and, and getting a... Uh, Supervised visits. So around 2016, um, oh yeah, the Veterans Day thing that happened. The fact Michael thinks that the Veterans Day incident is just a casual story that happened one time speaks volumes. Um, she calls me to go visit, to pick up the kids on Veterans Day, right? Because they didn't have school. I had to go pick them up at her parents. I show up and that's when I saw Joseph Rue sitting there and I said, Joe, he touched my kids. I didn't, Wait, who's Joseph Rue? The, her new boyfriend. And, and, and Who was babysitting I didn't, I didn't, your kid? I Where was she? Was, did, was she working? She, she was actually in the house. I didn't know. I just saw her SUV and I saw him. So I thought he was dropping our kids off. Okay. Joe never babysat the kids. Not ever. Yeah. And I said, like, Joe, he touched the kids. He runs inside. I didn't cuss at him. I didn't threaten him. But she put in the police report. I, I said I was going to kill him and stuff like that. I mean, I, I didn't do any of that. I had a gun in the car if I wanted to. I probably could have, you know, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't matter. So, Murdering your ex-wife's boyfriend while picking up the kids at the in-laws sure is funny. So anyway, he goes, he runs inside, and then I go, my, my parents-in-law are in the garage. I guess my kids heard it, and I didn't see my kids, so I go over there, and, and I get, my daughter gets handed to me in her backpack. So I have my daughter in my arm. I, I, my son is over is in the corner. He's a little scared because he heard me yelling. And I'm like, come on, Mason, let's go. We, let's, let's what go. were you yelling about? Oh, just yelling at Joe. I was like, are you touching my daughter? This is around the same time. Okay. So I go to go see my, my son. I or to say, come on, let's go. We got to get out of here. Because they say, oh, we're going to call the cops. I'm like, I have a TPO in place. And then she comes out of the garage and starts yelling at me. and say, oh, how dare you, blah, 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 or whatever. And I grab my daughter and it won't give me my son. I try to grab my son's arm. Let's go. And, and her mom, like, blocks me out of the way. The only word for that situation is horrifying. Those poor kids getting yanked around by their crazy father. I don't touch her at all. I have my daughter on the backpack and I end up just leaving because they call the cops and there's a TPO in place. That's called absconding. So I end up leaving and... TPO is restraining order, restraining temporary order. restraining order. And then the cops say, call me and say, oh, did you go to her parents' house? I was like, yeah, we have an arrangement to go pick up the kids. And she told me she wasn't going to be there and she's there. I was like, oh, well, she, you violated a protective order because you saw her, and she said you pushed her. It's like, I never touched her whatsoever. Incorrect. You pushed her. And like, okay, where are you? I'm at my grandparents' house that was right down the street. That's where I originally wanted them to do it because her parents were a little hostile, you know. And, and then the, they end up going and, and, and uh, said, oh, where are you? I'm at my grandparents. Oh, we're going to come over there. Wait right there. We'll get your statement. I was like, are you going to arrest me? Like, yeah, you violate, yeah you're going to go to jail. I was like, what? Wait, why would they arrest you? Because they, they said I violated the protective order because I was there. 
Incorrect. Because it, I was within 100 yards of her. When she told, baited me to come there and said she wasn't there and she's there. So, I, and it was my weekend to have the kids, you know? So I ended up taking off and I went to my brother's house. And my brother's, uh, my sister-in-law asked my daughter, is he touching you again? And she said, yes. I we're like, dude, you got to get her looked at or whatever. And, and I'm like, man, I don't know what to do. You know, the, the cops are like coming. My brother ends up trying to bring my daughter to the hospital. The McDonald family is a bunch of crazies. Just look at the behavior. And I guess uh, the ambulance comes or something. Or, and I leave my daughter at my brother's house to go pick up some clothes for her and stuff. And the cops were looking for me at the time, too. And I'm just like, what do I do? I don't even know what to do. I don't want to get arrested for some stupid bull, you know. And I ended up going and, and um, uh, CPS ended up coming and grabbing my daughter and bringing her back to my ex. And the cops were out looking for me, you know. And, and I ended up not staying at home that night. And These are the actions of a very guilty man. And I, I, I just go back to work as normal. And then I go back to court. I have a court hearing on in January, and I go to court for the protective order. So she got me, they charged me with violation of protective order and domestic violence because they said I pushed her. And they charged me with criminal uh, violation of protective order for trying to call her. She actually recorded me on a phone call, like on her computer, and said, said, oh, Mike, I'm recording you. I said, can I talk to the kids? We have, a, I have an order saying I can, you know, I can talk to them on the divorce decree. And she said, oh, you're violating protective order. Or, or no, she says, I'm recording this. I said, I do not consent to any call recordings. When you are violating a restraining order, things are different. So I told her that, right? And then she presented that, that video in court at that hearing. And I ended up um, going to trial on it. I asked for trial by... was the, the, the girl, was the, uh, Lisa Inkelstead, and the fifth one was, was uh, this uh, uh, Gregory, Julian Gregory, was a public defender, and he didn't, I gave him an email. A public so, defender in family law or public defender in, in criminal? In municipal court, criminal court. Okay. So I was getting charged with, with, with Violating a restraining six order. Six months, yeah, all, all, you know, within 100 yards. So they're trying to char charge me with almost a year and a half worth of charges. And then I go to court, and they said, oh, because... You got these charges. You didn't stay out of trouble. So, I, I mean, after the, the hearing, the judge denied me any any uh, trial by jury. I asked for another uh, for to retain my own counsel because this attorney even I sent him the emails of the talking parents, and they said, "Oh no, we're not gonna." Uh... When Michael gets deep into the lies, you can't understand what he's saying. Uh, I didn't. I didn't put that in motion. I was like, "What do you mean? This is the the basis of me, you know, her her baiting me." And then the, also the videos that were played. We shouldn't have been allowed because I, I said I don't consent to this call recording, which is illegal. So the state of Nevada, which I didn't know, is a two-party state. So, which later on, I got charged with wiretapping. Chapter 5. People are afraid of Michael Lee McDonald. And I ended up getting uh, charged uh, with my, my the judge said, uh, my ex goes in there, I'm afraid for my life. Judge said, are you really afraid? Okay, we're going to protect you, honey. Don't worry. We got this. One. I'm sure nobody used the word honey or we got this. Two, the court was trying to protect Candace and the kids from you. And then the judge ends up going, because I ended up testifying on the stand too. And I ended up getting, they said, my judge, the judge remanded me into custody because I had that 179 suspended and said, oh, since you got these new charges, you didn't stay out of trouble. We're giving you six months, we're imposing six months jail on you. So, so they gave me six months. Then they gave me 25 days for domestic violence. 52 domestic violence classes, which is usually... Michael never did any classes outside of prison. Usually a second offense. I never even touched her, but her parents went collaborated and said that I, I, I pushed her. I never touched her whatsoever. Chapter 6. Realty Law and the House. As soon as I get thrown in jail, she breaks in the house that, that she hadn't been in for almost two years that I was supposed to get. I had a refi approved on. Judge uh, Hardcastle, who filled it from, for... for uh, uh, Linda Marquis, I had to show up to court in chains and hand, handcuffs I'm trying to ask for bail or to get out or, or, or appeal it. And she denied any stay and ordered that my house be sold. Um, even though she broke in the house and wasn't supposed to be in there, went and broke in my safe. I had like $5,000, gold, silver, all this stuff. Lies, lies, lies. <clears throat> Ended up going and... What year did she break in your house? 
Uh, this was in 2017. Okay. So I get thrown in in January 2017. I lost my job at Geotab. I'm over there in jail. So and two years into this divorce, it gets messier and messier. She wanted in the divorce. You know, we While already, you're in jail, she we breaks into your house and steals the stuff out of Just your Just because her name was on the house didn't give her permission to enter the house. So then then my parents go and call the cops on her and say, hey, she's robbing them blind. And they say, they say, oh, this is a civil matter. We can't do anything. And then two weeks later, she goes to family court and gets exclusive possession with Judge Hardcastle. And I got another attorney called George, my parents, my mom hired called uh, uh, Procopius. What was this, your fourth lawyer or fifth lawyer? It's like my sixth lawyer. Your sixth lawyer? Whoa. <laughs> so, oh, my God, Michael. That's so impressive. And he says, oh, Judge, she's robbing him blind. And we're, we order that you, you say, say, oh, that, no, she's not robbing him blind. She can take whatever she... And it's like, what are you talking about? He's been in jail. He's in jail. He can't do anything. And gave her exclusive possession of the house, allowed her to sell the house. It's supposed to be sold at market value. She she under sold the house by forty. Ended up throwing away all my stuff in a dumpster. My family was allowed to get stuff for like six hours or something to get some of my things. And you only almost, got six hours to get your possessions to get out my of the possessions. house. And I was there. You were there. in prison. Yeah, I was in jail, and my family only got some of the stuff. They couldn't get everything. And almost all my stuff gets away, thrown away in a dumpster. I had about $100,000 worth of IT equipment I used to sell online and on eBay from the company too. And and yeah, I, I get thrown, all that stuff gets thrown away. And I ended up getting, I, I ended up spending six freaking months in jail. All these homeless people, I could tell you all kinds of crazy stories about that too. Chapter 7, The Las Vegas Jail. See all these homeless people? Um, well, I would say how many homeless people they throw in the city of Las Vegas. They would. They had some ordinance where they just passed where you can't sit or lay on the sidewalk. So they're going sweeping all these homeless people and incarcerating them against their will, <clears throat> just for not having a home or sleeping on the sidewalk or going to, instead of telling them to move somewhere, they go throw them in jail for a couple of nights. Okay. And which is crazy. It's a it's a deprivation of rights. You know, they go and throw them in jail, and all these poor homeless people were getting thrown there. And I'm over there sitting in jail, can't do anything. My whole house gets sold illegally. Divorce is a bitch if you choose not to cooperate. I, I was supposed to be released in June of 2017. June of 2017 comes, my date comes, I'm like, I'm leaving today, finally, I'm out of here, this, this craziness. You're sleeping Were you in jail night. or prison? In jail. In city jail. jail. In jail. Las Vegas, city yeah. jail. And, and, and that was horrible. And they just passed a, a thing where you trial by jury. Cause I, anyway. Um, so you're saying for criminal offenses or misdemeanors? For misdemeanors, yeah. you can have a jury if you want to. No, misdemeanors, you can't have a jury. But did they change that law? They just changed the domestic violence here recently. Yeah. Okay. And okay. I filed a mandamus to try to get that records. It's a serious it horrid. I, I had to go be a porter there and, and what's a porter? Like, <laughs> what's everything? Like serve food and mop the floors and stuff like that. And and I'm over there reading every book I can and just praying to God. And I hear like I almost feel God ask me, Can I use you? Can I use your story? Or or can I you know, can I was like, God, why? Why me? Why is all this happening? I keep reading Job and read the whole Bible while I was in there and they would have like some pastors come in like every Thursday and we get some really good religious materials and stuff. And I'm just praying all the time, you know, like chapter eight, final lies and evil plans for the future. Anyway. Okay. So once again, if people want to reach out to you, um, family you unification founded Alliance, a group, family unification, Alliance.org. family unification, Alliance .org. This is how to get in touch with the foundation that Michael created. Please contact them with any questions you may have. Oh, and another thing, we try to get President. Uh, I talked to President Trump about this too. Like, I was I, I was backstage with him at South Point when I was running, and I asked him, "Hey, can you please support HJ one twenty one SB forty eight? And he's like, "Oh, I can't." Right? I, can I tried to talk to. The, I met Joe Biden too. I shook his hand, and I. Michael may have yelled something in Donald Trump's direction, but spoke to him. I think not. I think I have it on Instagram. I tried to get him to pass help pass our, our, our bill out there that's in there. So with those issues, my, my stepdad, he was even a, a psychiatrist in the, the um, juvenile justice system. He worked there for many years and we'd go through, see all these crazy, these kids who, you know, try to burn their parents alive or cause different issues. And so anyway, yeah, it's a big issue We're we got a lot of, a lot of work to do and we're, we're working on it. We're raising money. We're, we're applying for some grants. There is no, we, there are no grants. There's just Michael and his hatred, um, and it's highly needed. We gotta, we gotta help to, to be that that resource to do stipulated orders to keep it out of a crazy judge's um, 
orders that, that order something that's not in the best interest of the children. And if, if two parties can agree, which it's hard to do sometimes to mediate that, but it's highly needed. And, and we should also be teaching people to do whatever you can to stay together if you have children, you know. And Don't you want to get all these judges fired? Even Michael knows how ridiculous that sounds. Oh, yeah, a lot of them should definitely need to be off the hook. And these judges need to get mental evals, too. I mean, that one shooting himself that was in my case, you know, and uh, a bunch of other these judges and attorneys, they they don't have mental evals. They don't, they, they don't have a – they have a judicial college they go through, and then they become a judge, you know. And they have a thing called CLEs, which is uh, continuing education learning that your credits for they have to do every year. We're trying to build out and teach judges and attorneys how to – to deal with some of these matters as well and, and stop being so despotic or, or unjust or, you know, like it, it's so corrupt, you know, unchecked power. Judges are unchecked power. Yeah. The interviewer might be confused about a few things regarding the judiciary. Uh, unchecked power, um, what, what power unchecked is, uh, it, it, it's just. It, it, Every single time you have a trauma or drama. Okay. You should never experience this again. Nobody should have to experience this, and especially being alienated from their children. It's it's so torturous and soul ripping to lose your your own flesh and blood and not be in their lives. So, yeah. But hopefully, we'll get this these things passed soon and be able to help and and change, re change and reform these things. So. Thank you for taking Alliance dot com. Yeah. May you. the goodness bless your life. God bless you. Peace. Thank you. God that was so that was so bad. In so many ways, this man will never stop.